and we are live. I can quickly refresh my feed over here. There you go. Give you guys a couple of uh, minutes to get on. But I just came on here to chat with you guys. I haven't done a, a live stream in God knows how long, probably a couple months. Um, I haven't done a live stream on Instagram in a while as well, but I've been busy. But bath season is approaching. So I'm going to come on here, guys, and I'm going to chat about what I've been doing in the off season and my plans are for the bath season and answer your questions, of course. The best part about live streams. Live streams. Wow. I got to talk to you guys about fishing, which is a lot of fun. So I'd like for you guys to get on for a little bit. We have a couple people on, actually. We have Virginia Fisherman and Zachary. How's it going? How is it going? Um, so lately, I've pretty much just been pike fishing. I don't really fish for walleye much, or muskie actually opened this weekend. I didn't get to go fishing this weekend. I had a couple commitments, but I've been pike fishing. I hit up a couple northern lakes. You guys saw that video of the um, remote northern lake. <sighs> wow, I, guess, I can't believe I got into that lake, that boat launch. If I go back to that lake, I'll show you guys the boat launch. You guys will be surprised that I even got in there um, without a truck. I don't own a truck or anything like that. But more people are getting on right now. Get real bass fishing. How's it going? How's um, New Jersey? You're from New Jersey. How's New Jersey going? Um, Aiden, how's it going? Joel? Ryan, fishing frames. What's up? What's up? Johnny, how's it going? If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll answer those. But I'm pretty much just going to give you guys a summary of what I've been doing. Um, a little bit of an update live stream. So like I said, I've been pike fishing. I've been pike fishing up north. I went over to the Muskoka's actually last weekend to fish with uh, Seb Sea Bass Outdoors. Let me show you guys something. Um, I've started throwing like big baits for pike. I'm I'm usually like a jerk bait, you know, spinner bait kind of kind of gal, I guess you could say, um, for for pike. I've done very very well on um, jerk baits, especially. So um, I started throwing. I actually picked up a little bit of a beefier rod uh, this year. So I've been throwing some glide baits and some heavier swim baits. And look at this heartbreak right here, guys. This is like a eighty dollar bait, I think, or seventy five or sixty five dollar bait. Eyes missing. This is the first time I've thrown it too. Last weekend, eyes missing. That eyes probably cost like three dollars something like that. This is mega bass. It's super expensive. Eyes missing. You got the tooth mark here. You guys will see this in the video. I have I have some cool footage in that video, but tooth mark here. Tooth mark here. I mean, it was bound it was bound to happen. Um, I just. I was really skeptical about throwing a really expensive bait for pike, but uh, go big or go home, um, especially with expensive stuff. I figured it looks so good. They're, they're bound to eat it. And I mean, they did, or they tried to at least. You guys can see there. But yeah, that's, um. you guys will see that in the next video or in a couple of videos. And actually, I've been editing, editing all day. So uh, yeah, I've been pike fishing a lot. I went walleye fishing with Seb as well. You guys will see that. And yeah, uh, Bass open in two weeks on the 16th um, down here in the Toronto area. And then up north where I fish a lot, they open the week after that. So I'll be fishing a lot in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, am I from Toronto? Yes, I am from the Toronto area. Muskie opener? Yes. So this weekend was muskie opener, um, I think, for pretty much all of Ontario. So a lot of people have been out fishing for muskie. I, I didn't end up going. My favorite pike bait is definitely a 110 or 130 size jerk bait in um, any natural color or a nice white opaque color. I like that color a lot. Last year I did very, very well on that. Need to go fish now, bye. Have, have fun tonight. Um, come to South Texas, let's go fishing for bass. I'll end up coming to Texas one day. Um, I just don't really see that in the near future. I don't think I'll be traveling to the States until the winter time, just because fishing here in Ontario in the summertime is so good. Uh, there's no point of me going down south or anything like that. Um, unless I end up going like saltwater fishing. But again, I'd probably rather save my money and end up going in the winter when it's freezing cold up here. So I think our bass are on beds right now. Yeah, they're definitely on beds. Last weekend, we uh, caught a couple off beds by accident. But, um, yeah, they're definitely on beds. I think our, our full moon was a couple days ago. Or it, was, it was last week. 
I think it was Sunday or Monday. And uh, I think that, you know, started the whole, the whole spawning period over here, at least. Uh, what's the biggest northern pike you've caught? My PB is, I think, 37 or 38 inches. Um, yeah, I haven't caught a, a pike that big in, in years. But uh, this year, my biggest so far was, I think, just under 30. So nothing too big. Um, the Muskokas have been producing very, very well, though, for 40-plus inches. When is the best time to drop shots? Um, I like drop shotting, high pressure days, um, but I can't really, I, th I see a drop shot as like a last resort, in, from, in my opinion. I always catch fish on a drop shot. Um, usually high pressure days, uh, bluebird skies, no wind are a little bit harder to catch fish for me at least. So that's when I resort to going finesse fishing, whether that be a trick worm or a drop shot or anything really slow or finesse. That's when I, that's when I do that. But Honestly, just let the fish tell you. If you can't get them on jigs or crankbaits or something like that, just go more finesse and you'll catch them. From Brazil, wow, how's it going? Giant peacock. Yeah, no, that's definitely on the list. I still haven't caught a peacock. I've been to Florida two times this year and I still haven't caught a peacock. Um, but, oh well, it's, it's, it's bound to happen eventually. Uh, what got you into fishing? Actually, <laughs> my uncle got me into fishing. He's you guys will see this whole story in the summer. I got a whole like video plan and all that stuff, but I learned how to fish in Poland. Um, I'm Polish. My family's Polish. We go back to visit our family in Poland every couple of years, and that's when I got into fishing. Actually, a carp got me hooked on fishing. Out of all fish, um, I, a carp got me all excited, but um, you guys will hear about that story in the summertime. Um, Who is your favorite fishing buddy? I can't choose... I usually actually fish for myself. I fish for myself a lot, but um, yeah, I, I can't choose that. Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not. Yeah, no, I can't choose. Hey, how's it going, Andrew? River Reaper fishing. Carp fishing is awesome. I, I don't know why, but I've never really carp fished here in, uh, in uh, Ontario. I just, I'm not really drawn to the whole carp game. Mind you, it's probably a lot of fun. They fight like crazy. I've heard of people um, catching catching carp on flies, actually, like on top water. That would be a lot of fun, like on a on a fly rod. But I, I haven't really done it. I don't fly fish a lot either. So, do you like top water bass fishing? Uh, yeah, everyone likes top water bass fishing. I think um, there's always a time and place for it. I the fish the, the lake I fish a lot isn't really a top water lake, um, so I I can never really get them going on top water, but it's a lot of fun seeing seeing blow ups. Um, when I was down in Florida, actually, you guys have seen this video. It's my last Florida video. Uh, we were we were we were fishing swim jigs on top of lily pads, like a top water bait, which is really weird, but it was working. Um, and that was that definitely got my heart racing. You see a huge fish come out of the pads and and bite your swim jig. Awful like hookup ratio because a jig it's a jig, but like on top water. But um, it was a lot a lot of fun. And uh, actually, my next, no, two more Florida videos. I have two more Florida videos left. I have one where we go fishing. Actually, both of them I go fishing in a lake. So I have two more Florida videos left, and the rest are going to be just me fishing for pike walleye, and then when bass open, I'll be fishing for bass. So stay tuned for those Florida videos. Uh, last two to go. And uh, we end up catching a lot of fish in those videos. It was overall a really, really good trip. Um, we caught a lot of fish. I think we caught, I was fishing for, we fished for five days straight. Uh, mind you, we would get up at like three, four, fish till one, sit around till it gets like cooler again because it was scorching hot out and then fish during the night. So we fished 24 seven. Um, I don't think I ate anything on that trip, but we fished for five days straight. I think we caught over probably 200 bass. Um, but yeah, my thumbs were gone like the second day. The fish in Florida have really, really sharp teeth. It's weird. Um, I don't think they have like crayfish or crawfish to um, to dull their teeth out, so they're really, really sharp. But I wasn't expecting that at all. But we ended up catching a lot of fish, and that was a lot of fun. Um, definitely the baits. I don't have them with me here, actually. But the best baits of the trip were the baits that caught us the most fish was um, a bladed jig in white and chartreuse. Um, I actually didn't throw any worms or any craws that much. I I flipped around uh, Cover Crow on an archer lawn by Jackal a couple times, um, caught a couple of fish on that, but it was mostly the chatterbait and the swim jig um, that caught us all of our fish, and actually a couple on a, on a swim bait as well. 
but it was a very, very fun bite. They were all active. They're all munching. Um, I was honestly surprised that it was it was so hot out, yet they were hammering the, the bladed jig. So uh, that was a lot of fun. But um, what would your dream fishing trip be? Um, at the moment, I'd probably be fishing uh, Manitoba with Aaron Weeb. That'd be a lot of fun or like fishing like Norway or something for giant pike um, or, or like Mille Lacs or something like that for smallmouth. That'd be a lot of fun as well. Uh, oh, next question. Any trips planned to Mille Lacs? No, <laughs> no trips planned to Mille Lacs. Uh, Chicago has the biggest Polish population next to Warsaw. Yeah, I know a lot of people in Chicago. <laughs> what does my hat say? My hat says raw fish it's a it's a fishing apparel company from ontario what setup do you use for pike and bass i don't have any like designated pike setups i fish my uh, flipping stick and my heavy swim bait rods um and actually just a medium heavy for for pike um i use a seven seven six extra heavy for big glide baits like this guy right here um a little bit it's a zodius so it's a little bit more of a moderate tip compared to like the karate or something like that um, I use a 7.6 heavy and then a 7.2 medium heavy for my jerk baits. I just, I honestly just use my bass stuff. I don't have anything crazy for, uh, for pike or musky or anything like that at the moment. Uh, carp are fun for fighting and you clean up the river at the same time. That is true. Carp are, uh, nasty in some of the lakes here. They're eating up all the, all the grass. What is your biggest fish? Oh, lake trout. I was going to say my barracuda from Cuba, but that was only like 10 pounds. Um, the lake trout that I caught with sea bass outdoors this last January or February, I think it's actually January. Um, forget what it was. I think it was like 12, 10, 12 or something like that. Between the 10, 12 pound mark. Definitely my biggest fish that I can remember at least. I don't think I've caught anything bigger than that. So I'll, I would say lake trout. Any tips for beginner fishermen? Uh, yes, keep it simple. There's so much stuff, so many lures, so many companies, so many line types, so many rod types. Keep it simple. Um, I would start off with a seven foot medium spinning rod and like a seven foot two or something like that medium heavy bait casting rod. Um, buy a couple craws, a couple crank baits, a couple spinner baits, a couple top waters, and just start from there. Um, another tip is to watch YouTube videos. I've learned so much from YouTube videos. I'm sure you guys have learned a lot from YouTube videos. Um, you, you get a lot of info from the internet, so um, definitely use that to your advantage when you're learning to fish. Do you like fishing for steelhead? Yeah, so like this, is, this, this spring was my second and third time going for steelhead i've been steelhead fishing a total of three times and i'm absolutely like in awe how how crazy it is um it just it, it was it was so fun like the, the steelhead i caught it was only like i don't know six six seven pounds or something like that but the way they fight is absolutely insane you're throwing like a 13 foot like medium light three power rod um i was using a spinning setup but um it was it was so fun i'm definitely gonna be doing that a lot more i need to i need to pick up a nap a, a center pin setup i'll do that eventually but um they aren't running or anything like that right now just like native trout in the stream so i'm not gonna not gonna go for that right now uh when are you coming back to orlando love to fish with you if i do go anywhere in the states it'll probably be this winter do you work or go to school? Yeah, so I do both. I go to university, so my exams were at the end of April. So right now I'm not in school, but I'm working during the week, um, both mornings and nights. So yeah, working, so fun. <laughs> Rather be fishing, but. What's your favorite spinning rod setup? Ooh, I have it right here. I don't wanna grab it right now though. I just finished re-spooling all of my setups. Um, it's a 7.4, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to grab it. Yeah, I don't want to knock all my rods over. It's a 7.4 uh, medium fast Corrado rod. I only got to use it like end of August, September, October, November, but um, I love it. I love longer 
uh, spinning setups. I'm definitely going to be switching. Eventually, we'll be switching to uh, like seven fours, seven sixes, and all that stuff. Um, definitely a lot of fun, especially fishing in deeper water. But uh, with a three thousand size reel, all my all my bass fishing reels are three thousand size. You hold more line, and the spool is actually a little bit bigger, so there's less like line twist issues and all that stuff. If you think about it, if you're going to wrap around like braid or something around your finger versus wrapping it around like I don't know a bottle like this or a water bottle, um, you'll have more issues with uh, line twisting up and all that stuff on a smaller diameter. So that's why I run 3000. St. Clair over Mille Lacs. Really? I've never heard that one. St. Clair is cool, but St. Clair is like a huge like mud hole. There's no structure in it whatsoever. So you just really got to know spots to fish there. Um, what's your next bucket list fish, both salt and freshwater? I've never caught a muskie. So that's my, that's my next freshwater fish. If I do go, uh, scouting out for them and salt water oh i don't know i don't know i have no idea i don't i'm not really big on that i mean watching all of john b's videos right now a gt would be cool but i don't really want to travel for that um a shark or something like or sailfish would be cool like deep water offshore sail fishing that'd be really cool are you going to do any tournaments this year? Um, I, I haven't signed up for any clubs. Um, that's not in the scope for this year right now. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm not going to be fishing out of my boat. So if any of my friends ask me to do a tournament, I, I won't say no. But it's not going to be out of my boat for sure. Um, I don't have like a live hole to hold my fish. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll be doing any tournaments this year. Next year, I'm thinking about uh, joining... Uh, some sort of bass club. There's a bunch of them here in Toronto. I don't know which one yet, um, but eventually I will probably end up joining. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Will's on here. Yeah, I used I used Will's um, rod for steelheading. His dad actually lent me his uh, 13 footer. That's awesome that you're on here, Will. We'll we'll get fit. We'll get to fishing this summer. You'll uh, you'll come out with me. We can go fishing um mine's a shark yeah that'd be really cool like a black tip or something like that same here musky have eluded me might go out wednesday for my first yeah it'd be a lot of fun um a bunch of lakes in the kawarthas have them um ooh. let's hide that yeah a bunch of the lakes in the kawarthas have them um Pigeon has them. Sturgeon has them. When I was actually fishing my very first tournament with uh, with Seb with sea bass, I first fish in the boat, like whatever seven a.m. in the morning. I don't know what time he started fishing. First fish in the boat in a bass fishing tournament was a forty-five inch muskie. <laughs> um, I had that on video, obviously, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Are you planning to fish big swim baits for bass in Ontario? Yes, this is why I picked up lures like the Sky, like the uh, Ganter Rail and all that stuff. Um, I know of a couple people, a couple of my buddies that fish uh, big swim baits for bass in Ontario, and they do very well. So it's kind of a kind of a secret here in Ontario. So I guess only you guys will know, but they do work. Um, they work up here. It's probably a little bit harder to get a couple of bites. I'm not going to be dedicating my days to swim bait fishing. Mind you that I, I still want to catch fish every time I go out. But um, I've, I've been thinking of like every time I hit a new spot, a new shallower spot, I would throw like a big swim bait first before I throw like a chatter bait or whatever I'm throwing that day. Um, so that, that might be a good plan. I'm not going to dedicate my days to swim baits though. Um, I still have to provide my content for you guys and I want to catch fish. So, uh, Hello from Texas. How's it going, Glenn? Daniel, what do you recommend for Simcoe smallmouth? Um, I recommend going deep, and I recommend using finesse tactics. Um, just bring a spinning rod, bring a drop shot or a shaky head or something like that, and go at her. Um, Simcoe's not like a 20, 30, 40 fish a day kind of deal. Simcoe's like a five fish a day kind of deal. Um, it's, it's harder to get on the quantity in Simcoe, but man, are they all fat. You will not, you will not catch a smallmouth under three pounds or three and a half pounds in a day. If you're, if you're on them, if you figure them out, but there's some big fish in there. 
big fish in there. <laughs> so just, it's going to take you a little bit of time. Like, I don't even know Simcoe at all. I just go out with Seb, but um, it's a hard lake to fish, but there's big ones in there. Go finesse. Uh, what is your first rod? My first, what was my first rod? My first rod was a two piece. I actually ended up buying a two piece bait caster. Uh, my first bait caster was a two piece set, six, six medium fast bait caster with a six, four to one gear ratio. My first spinning setup, actually, I think I bought as a combo to be honest with you guys. You know what? My mom has that combo. My mom fishes that combo now. Um, it was a six, six as well. Uh, one piece or two piece, I don't even know, medium, light, fast action rod. Um, yeah, still have that one laying around up north. What's your ultimate boat you would like to have someday? Oh, wow, I don't know. Pretty much anything that can stick a, like a 250 on the back. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Reasonably, I'm going to be sticking with aluminum boats until um, I'm pretty much out of school, have a nice job and all that stuff. Um, my next boat, I'm looking at like a 19 to 20 foot um, aluminum, like bass boat, like the Lund, uh, the Lund um, Pro V Bass. Those are really expensive though. Something a little bit older probably, but definitely going to go up in length. Right now I'm rocking a 16 footer. Would like to go to a, like a 20, 19, 20 footer. Um, eventually, again, aluminum, and then eventually I'll end up going with fiberglass. Fiberglass boats are just super expensive and super expensive on gas. So... Um, unless I'm going to be fishing like Simcoe or some big lakes or like St. Clair a lot, I'm not going to go with fiberglass. It's just not worth it for me. Uh, ooh, you should fish Lake Hartwell one day. I hope to one day. Um, eventually, I'd like to do like the do like a road trip of the states. That'd be pretty cool. Hit all the big lakes. Uh, Chesh, how's it going? Vintkarsko uh, the year. That's cool. Some Polish people on here. Um, good luck this summer. Gotta go. Thank you, Fishing Frames. You too. I've never caught a walleye yet. Um, to be honest, you're not missing much. <laughs> they don't fight hard. I mean, they're fun to catch when, like, you can't catch bass when they're off-season, but um, you're not missing much, trust me. Flora Series, nice. Keep it up. Thank you, Roy. When are you coming over to St. Clair for Smallies? JC, when are you going to invite me to St. Clair for Smallies? That's the real question. Um, I don't know. Uh, they're, they're definitely spawning there right now. I don't know. Um, have you seen Milliken fishing? He is hilarious and a good fisherman. Yeah, I, I watch a couple of his videos when I have time. He's a he. He looks pretty fun to fish with for sure. What would you throw when a high pressure cold front comes through? Ooh, cold front and high pressure. I'd go finesse. I'd go super finesse, like wacky rigs, Texas rig, like trick worms drop shot. I don't like high pressure. I don't like cold fronts. Sometimes cold fronts can help though when it's like scorching hot out, but ah, yeah, I'll just go finesse. Don't think about it too much. I went to Detroit River last week and they have, they do have decent sized pike and muskie in there, huge ones. I saw on the surface. Yeah, St. Clair has some big muskie. Um, Definitely a cool trip to do in the fall, go musky fishing on Lake St. Clair. That'd be on the bucket list for sure. Have you ever fished Balsam Lake? No, but good pike lake for sure. First St. Lawrence, big smallie. Oh, fish St. Lawrence, big smallies. I would if I lived closer, but there's no, I don't really want to go up there right now. Yeah, well, I don't fly hard, but they do taste good. They taste really good. Probably my favorite fish to eat. Um, perch, I don't like. Well, perch and walleye taste pretty much the same, but I prefer walleye over perch. What countries would you like to fish if you were able to go anywhere other than North America, Canada, and Poland? Uh, like Norway or something. That would be cool. Japan would be cool for bass fishing. That would be really fun. Um, South America would be cool, like Brazil or something like that for like peacocks. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. Stingray. I've never caught a stingray. You've caught one. That's cool. I, I don't think I don't know if I would want to catch a stingray. <laughs> a fluke or wacky worm. Uh, wacky rig trick worm. Not a, not like a fat Senko. Wacky rig trick worm um, has produced the most fish over my lifetime for me, for sure. Um, that's what I started using. That's what I've used 
when I just want to go out and catch fish. That's what I throw on for my friends that don't fish, want to just want to catch fish. Wacky rigged uh, trick worm. The uh, I think it's the Zoom trick worms that I use. I don't remember. You keep my nose. You should live down south in the U.S. No season for bass. I'm not moving right now. I'm in school, so. Uh, crankbaits or spinnerbaits? Depends. It just depends what they're biting. Um, I, I don't throw spinnerbaits a lot. A lot. I'd rather throw a chatterbait. But between crankbaits and spinnerbaits, um, crankbaits probably are a lot of fun. Unless I'm fishing like uh, super brushy pi brush piles or um, a lot of grass. Crankbaits taking the top of grass, I, I have done amazing on though. Um, where are you fit going for bass opener? I'm probably gonna fish. Mora Lake or Crow Crow Lake. It's uh, near Peterborough. I'll be fishing near Peterborough for opener. I don't know where yet. I haven't decided. When does your best season open? Yeah, the 15th or the 16th. That's Saturday. I forget what day it is. Let me quickly check. It is the sixth the sixteenth. That's Saturday it opens. So 16th, I'll probably be in Peterborough somewhere. I don't know where yet though. I love my 2010 Bass Tracker Pro. Yeah, trackers are cool. I fish out of a tracker in Florida with uh, Garrett. Really nice boats. What's your favorite lake to fish in Ontario? If I could fish one lake forever, it would probably be Simcoe just because of the big fish. But um, I don't have that luxury. I don't have a boat that can take Simcoe or anything like that. Um, I, I'm very... I was going to fish Simcoe or uh, Cook's Bay at least with my 16-footer, but... You really have to just pick your days when it's not that windy to go out there. What would you throw in a lake that has a lot of heavy cover? A topwater frog? Um, heavy cover as in like subsurface or on the surface? Either way, I'd throw like a topwater frog or punch um, or pitch, just like cross, Texas would cross. That'd be a lot of fun. <clears throat> How did you get, how'd you first get hooked on fishing? You guys will hear that story this summer. Um, the guy that actually taught me how to fish, I'll be teaching him how to bass fish. So you guys will, you guys will see that. Um, the first fish that really got me hooked on fishing was a carp in Poland. A carp out of all fish. Ooh. I have never fished up in cold water. 13 more sleeps till bass opener. I know. I'm so excited. What's the biggest bass you have caught in your life? Uh, 580 for smallmouth. That's my biggest bass. My biggest largemouth is 575. <clears throat> Will you fish out of a kayak this coming bass season? Uh, yeah. I plan on fishing a kayak a little bit more. There's a couple of lakes that I found that I know have really big fish but I can't get to in my boat, so uh, where I can't launch my boat into. So I'll be bringing my kayak there. Um, you guys will see those videos, of course. I'll be fishing out of my kayak, hopefully a little bit more than I did last year, because I know some of you guys like that. How long have we been on here for? Ooh, I cannot tell. Well, I want to stay on here for another five minutes or so. Uh, last minute questions, let me know. And I'm going to hop off here. I have two more videos to edit today. So we can see if we can, uh, if you can do that. Ooh, Timothy, how's it going? 28 minutes, wow. Oh, time flies. I was going to keep this down to like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, but I have to learn to fish deep. See, the issue with fishing deep is you really need some sort of um, either a map of some sort, like Navionics, um, or you need uh, electronics on your boat to really figure them out. But honestly, just find some sort of structure if you can, like a ledge. Um, there's a couple apps out there or a couple sites you can find the, the topographic map of a lake. And just use that to your advantage. Fish, steeper, um, walls, underwater, and all that stuff. But, or a deeper, or <laughs> get deeper. Oh, man, guys. I don't know if you're referring to my trout fishing experience. We were fishing a pool for steelhead. This guy comes out of nowhere. He sees us catch a fish. The guy comes out of nowhere. I think it was a deeper he was throwing or some sort of rock. I don't know, but he was he was pitching 
a huge like boulder into our pool of steelhead. Like who does that? I don't know if I don't know if Matt got that on video, but I have to, I had to like confront him and get him out of there. Jeez. Uh have you ever caught a gar? No, never caught a gar either. That's on the on the list for sure. I don't even know where to find gar, to be honest. I haven't seen a gar here in Ontario at all. When are you gonna go steelhead fishing again? Um I don't know. Probably probably I don't know. In the fall I know salmon run. I'm probably gonna go salmon fishing. And then probably next year, this time, I'll go steelhead fishing again. I gotta pick up a setup though. I have I have a rod on my mind that I gotta I really want. We'll see if I can uh, if I can buy that one. It's not out yet though. We'll see. Or I don't really know if it's out yet. No, out yet or not? But I haven't seen it anywhere, so we'll see. What is my major? I'm majoring in biomedical science. So pretty much just like science, <laughs> I guess you can say. Um, First year courses were obviously general, biochemistry, physics, math. Um, I'm really excited for third and fourth year though. Uh, some of the courses offered are super, super sick, so I cannot wait. Most memorable fish catch? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, probably my PB smallmouth. I was fishing a new lure I've never fished before. I was fishing like Simcoe and I was fishing with Seb. It was a lot of fun. That was a, that was a cool fish catch. Uh, my personal best largemouth was actually pretty cool too. Opener day, uh, fishing a chatterbait through grass. Um, fishing, like, I was fishing like a seven foot medium Shimano Salus rod, like one of those $50 rods. I thought the thing was going to snap on this rod. I was reeling this thing in. I thought I had a log, um, but then I realized it was a fish because it was moving. Um, it was, it's, it, I have it on video, obviously, but that was a lot of fun. <sighs> Bay of Quinty has a lot of pike. Oh, a lot of gar pike. Georgian Bay has a lot of gar. Yeah, I don't fish those, those areas a lot, but maybe one day I'll get on a gar. That'd be kind of cool. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to log off here and a uh, new video will be up Tuesday, probably, and then I'll be uploading three times a week pretty much when bass season opens. So a lot of videos for you guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy. In the comments down below, um, leave some video suggestions you guys want to see. I know if you guys, I know you guys have been wanting to see my rod and reel arsenal. I will film that for you guys next weekend, so you guys will see that. Um, but any other videos that you guys want to see me do, some tip and trick videos, more vlog videos, or something like that, let me know in the comments or pretty much anywhere, and I uh, will, um, I just want to know what you guys want to see, because if I'm making vlog videos, you guys don't want to see vlog videos then, you know, so, oh, it's not, it's not doing any politics on here, guys, come on, come on, no politics on this channel, please, um, but, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little live stream, and I will see you guys in the next one.